Yeah, good morning students. So, today we will discuss some basic concepts. Before we see the paging concepts, before that we will see some basic concepts. The first one is dynamic loading. What do you mean by dynamic loading? Let us suppose P is a process. Here in this example P is a process and M is the memory. Suppose if P is split into number of parts. Okay. Suppose if process P if process P is split into number of parts. Let us suppose if process P is divided into number of modules. Okay. Or number of instances. Or number of parts. We don't, we don't store all these modules into the memory. Okay, we will store only the module which is required. Okay, the type of storing is simply called as dynamic loading. Dynamic loading means during the execution of a particular process. When we are executing a process P, let us suppose process P consists of different modules. Okay, like P1, P2 and so on to PM. Okay, like P1, P2 and so on to PM. We don't store all these processes into the memory because it is of it is of uh, wastage of memory and wastage of time. Instead of doing that, what we do is only the instance, okay, which is required. Okay, that particular process. Let us suppose if P1 is required, then P1 will be moved into the memory. And after completion of its uh, execution, we will remove that. Similarly, when and where that particular module or instance is required, that particular instance will be loaded into the memory. Okay, this process is simply called as a dynamic loading. Okay, dynamic loading. So next is dynamic linking. So dynamic linking is nothing but, for example, let us suppose P and Q. These both are process. Let us suppose P and Q are two processes. Okay. If P depends upon, if process P depends upon process Q, then if you want to execute process P, then we have to execute process Q also. This is called dynamic linking. So these two are linked with one another. So let us suppose process P and Q. P and Q are two different process. So here, P is depending upon process Q. In that situation, if you want to execute process P, then we have to execute process Q also. This, this uh, type of notation is simply called as dynamic linking. Next, we have to undergo the basic concept like base and limit register. Base and limit register. We already know that, we already know that uh, what is a, what is a, uh, what a main memory consists of. We already know that what a main memory consists of. The main memory consists of two parts. The first part is filled with the operating system whereas the second part is for user space. So similarly here also the first part is for the operating system. The second part is for user space. The second part is for user space. So here let us suppose we have we have inserted three different processes like P1, P2, P3. Three different processes we have loaded. Okay, so 200th location is the base base address of P1. Okay, 200th location is the base address of P1. See, base address of P1 is 200. Why? Because the process P1 is started in 200th location. That is we call it as base. Okay, so then what about the limit? Limit is nothing but the address, the memory, the memory locations are the address spaces allocated for P1 or the memory locations used by P1. We simply call it as limit. Okay. So here the limit is 400 means P1 has, P1 has used 400 memory locations. So it, it started, its base address is 200. And uh, it used 400 uh, memory locations. So now this will become 600. Now the base address of P2 is 600. Okay, hope you are understanding. The base address of P2 is 600. And uh, if the address locations of P2 is, let us suppose, 300. 
300. 600 plus 300 it is 900. So this will become 900. So the base address of P3 is 900. Okay. So the limit of P2 is this will become limit. Limit of P2. This is the limit of P1. This is limit of P1. This is the limit of P2. P2 limit. So like that we indicate a base and limit register. Okay. So these are the basic concepts. Before going to paging we have to uh, look after this. Okay. So next concept is the hardware production. Okay. So here the CPU generates the CPU generates logical address. You have to remember one thing. CPU generates logical address. CPU generates logical address. Okay. CPU generates logical address. Okay. Whereas the main memory generates main memory generates physical address. Okay, this you should be familiar with. Okay, CPU generates logical address, whereas uh, main memory main memory uh, indicates okay or generates physical address. Okay, so see here the CPU generates the logical address. The CPU generates logical address. So now what happens is we will check the base in the previous case. Okay, we are discussing with respect to P1. Let us suppose P1. So its base address is 200. See, its base address is 200. See, the base address of P1 is 200. So that's what we have written. The base is 200. Base plus limit. So base is 200 and the limit is 400. So 200 plus 400 is 600. See, base plus limit. 200 plus 400 is 600. So now, see the hardware production. So the CPU has generated a logical address. Okay. So by using that logical address, we have to define the physical uh, address in the main memory. So it has generated a logical address. So now what we have to do is we have to check whether that logical address is greater than or equal to the base or not. Okay. If it is, if it is okay, then we have to check whether it is less than the base plus limit. See means it should be greater than or equal to 200 and it should be less than 600. So if you see greater than 200 and it should be less than 600 means this this slot what we have we have P1 okay so yes then we have to use the memory okay if anything goes wrong if these two cases goes correct then we will use this memory okay that memory okay if anything goes wrong, then it indicates an error. Okay. So, this is something about the hardware production. Okay. So, we have seen the basic uh, limit and uh, base base plus limit register, hardware production. And we have seen the basic technology like dynamic loading, dynamic linking. Okay. So, with this, we will stop for today's uh, session. Thank you.